Greetings. This is Mark Tomerdahl from the Brain Gauge Company, or Cortical Metrics, as, as we're known as. And we're going to talk about how what happens the very first time you run the Brain Gauge app. And what I'll do is share the screen. And what you see over here is you see the screen over here. You see my, you know, my account and password. And I'm going to log in. And it's going to pull up software. And it's going to say, welcome to Brain Gauge. And it's waiting for you to type in something. This is called the Brain Gauge ID. We used to call it subject ID. But basically, it's the same thing. It's just you put in some characters. And one thing, if you're not sure what to put in, you can always click this little information block. And it said, like I said, Brain Gauge ID is unique identifier for each subject. So if you have patience or whatever, you can you, you want to put in something that you'll be able to remember that person by. For me, I'm going to type in my initials, 0010. So it's going to be, you know, number 10, because it's only the 10th time I've ever even looked at this thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've done this a few times. Anyway, so now I'm going to enter that, and it's going to ask for some information. And since I feel old, I'm going to put in my birth year is 1900 and put in your race you know this is really none of this really is important the only thing that's really important is getting the handedness right that's the only thing that's really an issue click ok and then if you want to add notes here for the subject like what you're doing like beginning of treatment or or you know beginning to brain train or or anything you can you can drop down and put in anything that you want then it comes to the options page. And so you see, this is this, again, that's the brain gauge ID or subject identifier. And, you know, you've got some choices over here. Uh, right here is a training platform. And then you've got the different tests that you can take. We've got quick check, triage, triage plus, and the standard. So right now we're just going to do, you know, with that, I'll, I'll embarrass myself and do the quick check. I recommend like especially you know for the first if you're seeing patients or the very or if you're just getting the brain gauge do the standard once and then do it every you know few weeks or every month or two the quick check is something that you do you know a couple times a week only takes 90 seconds so i'm going to embarrass myself i'm going to do the quick check click on it now i've got my brain gauge right here and each time you know, I'm going to be doing the test. You're going to see my answers are extremely slow because you do really poorly if you're uh, testing and talking at the same time. Maybe I can get a little better. But you see the the bar at the bottom right that tells you how much of the of the test has been done, how much of this test session has been completed. And I'm just going to sit here and rattle away and talk. And, you know, really what you want to do is you want to shoot for about 200 milliseconds or better. And again, it's hard to do if you're distracted. So my my focus score is going to be all over the map because my scores are bouncing around. We'll see that in a second. So just a few more tests and then we'll be done with the actual quick check test. So all I'm doing is responding as quickly as I can. It's a very simple test. And it's, it's reflective of a lot of things, which is the topic of another talk. Okay. Now, after you do the quick check, you get a, you, you get a results page. And over, you know, this tells you basically where your overall result, results are. It combines both the reaction time and reaction time variability score. And this is putting me in the yellow. Green is good. Red is not so good. Obviously, it's not great. My average was 242. Reaction time variability is 33. That's kind of stinks. Average, you know, reaction time variability should between be between 5 and 15 milliseconds. Uh, speed metric, 242. So let's see where that is. Definitely not in the elite, not in the top 1% with that score, not in the top 5% with that score either. I'm not less than 100 milliseconds, not less than 200 milliseconds, not above average. Uh, starting to get in above the normal normative range, but you know, maybe if I kept my mouth shut and didn't talk so much while I was doing the test, I might have done better. But seriously, when you see people that are well over 600 milliseconds, they shouldn't be driving. 
Same thing for anything over 50 milliseconds for this number right here. They shouldn't be dealing with heavy machinery. They shouldn't be doing anything. You really need to think about it. So, you know, where does that reaction time variability come from? If you remember, you know, I had some scores up here in the 300s. I had some scores well below 200. And I kind of bounced around a lot. That's your variability. What you want to see is a nice straight line here. If this line trends up, that could be indicative of fatigue or indicative of talking too much or being distracted at the end of the test versus at the beginning. But this just gives you an overall performance tracking history of 90 seconds. So it's not a lot of, it's not a long time, but it gives you a micro fatigue score. Uh, and that's, that's basically it. Now, there is one other thing on this page to make note of. Over here, it says enter your email for full report. So if you want to get these numbers or, if, you know, then you can type in your email, click on submit, like I can put in my email here and click submit, and then, then it's going to exit this page. Now, if you're in the position where you don't want to, um, you don't want people to uh, linger you want and you want to test the next person, then that's really a good good thing to do because some people will want to look at this page a lot and you can say, look, they can look at the results if they email it to themselves. So that's that sort of saves a little time. So then I submit that and say that it's saved. And then you say, okay, well, let's go back. Let's exit. Now we're ready for the next person. So if you're testing people over and over and over, you need to test type in something else. Now I'm going to type in MT00. I'm going to say you can type in this same person again. And this time, because that's already been, we've already set that subject up, it's going to come up here and I'll have all my information in here that, you know, that my birth year of 1900s in here, my handedness is already here. And I can click OK. And I can come back to this page, back to the options page. Now let's just say, OK, maybe we just want to do some training. Maybe you've already done the treatment. Maybe they're training. You're training at home, or maybe. So let's click on training platform. And the training platform, the first time you see it, comes up and looks like this. Now each of these columns is a different task or different exercise. So speed, accuracy, temporal order, judgment, timing, plasticity, multitasking. These are tasks that will help you with speed. They're not the same as the actual tests that you take. They're not tracking, but they do allow you to jump. You know, they do allow you to train. Level one is the easiest level. Level five is the hardest level. Level one is the only level that gives you instructions. Generally, people skip that. So, you know, let's you can you can do level one. You click on it with your mouse, You're not the brain gauge. It's not a mouse yet. Click on that with a mouse, and it's going to give me all these instructions at the beginning. Click with your Indian finger as soon as you feel a tap, and then I'm at level one, and it's got to make sure I know all this. Then it says go. This is all the stuff that's going to get skipped at level two. And so now I'm going to sit here and do this test, you know, a few times. And when you do level two, you don't have those first instructions. So what you want to do is, you know, this is a training platform is where you go and you select one of those exercises and you do it several times. So how do you select where you can get your goal on these exercises is to get 100 percent score on all of these. Now, let's jump down to level four, you know, or basically this is like each level is a little harder. And there will be a level that you can't do. And if I were to stick with the speed or reaction time, I just go up and down this level and you find the level you can't do anymore. Let's say I can't, I fail at level five, then I should practice at level four. So we check on that. Obviously, I don't get all those instructions. And now I'm just going to hit the button and train at level four. And if I wait too long, it'll get an X. OK, I didn't react fast enough, so I failed. And then I do the next one. I didn't fail. Now I'm going to the next one. I'm just not going to respond very quickly. I'm just gonna wait. And there you get another X. And we get one more, one more test. 
and that time I passed. So that's going to be 60%. So what you're shooting for is 100% uh, on each level. And you're just going to train at the level or practice at the level that you need to practice at. So basically, this think of this as a scorecard. You have all these different tasks, and they will help you with different. These are exercises that will help you with the brain gauge tests. They will help you with all these different ones. When you take the standard test, you'll you'll have a better idea about which of these tests you need to work on. Now I'm going to exit again, and it's going to go right back here, and it's going to ask for the next subject. So the reason we exit and ask for the next subject or the next brain gauge ID is simple. We don't want one person's scores to get mixed up with another. And you know, when you want to analyze data, you click here, go to analyze results, and you'll see the results that come up. And what you should do is go to the video on, there's a bunch of videos on data analysis and looking at the different and what each of those measures mean. So I think that's enough for now. And I'm going to stop this video, and I hope that helped.